All right, so this video is a video about matter changes. And so by the end of this video, you should be able to classify a change of matter as either a physical or a chemical change. So let's get started. All right, so first up, physical change. This is where matter changes the form of a substance without changing the identity of the substance. Now this means that the substance is always going to be the same substance. It just changes what it looks like or um, how big it is, things like that. Uh, and it, you can always be, it can be separated back to the original substances. So no matter what happens to it, it can be, you can get it back. So examples of this here are like the chalk here that I have. If you break the chalk, you can always get it back if you push it back together um, and it's still there. So breaking it and then you have the two pieces of chalk, there's still chalk. At its core, um, the substances are still chalk. So um, same thing as like if you get a haircut, you cut your hair and then you have two pieces of hair. You, it's still hair. You haven't changed the molecular makeup of it. So it's still the same compound or it's still the same element. You're just changing the way it looks. So these are examples of physical changes here. Um, classic and examples of physical changes are whenever you have phase changes. So whenever you're changing from a phase from a solid to a solid to a liquid to a gas or a gas um, and to a solid or vice versa, solid to gas, gas to liquid, liquid to solid. In this case, whenever you're going through the phase change pyramid here, you're never actually changing the composition of that substance. So if we use the classic example of H2O, uh, if you have a liquid H2O at room temperature, if we add a little heat to it, or a lot of heat actually, so if we add a lot of heat to it, a lot of energy we add, then we're going to get that liquid to now be evaporated into a gaseous state. Now, if you still collect all those atoms or add all of those molecules, you're still going to see that it's H2O. It's just that now it's in a gaseous state. Same thing as if you take that liquid and you remove the heat from it or you releases the heat and so you drop that temperature down, you're going to solidify it or you're going to freeze it and it's going to become little ice cubes. Again, it's still going to be H2O, it's just in a different form. And the thing is, is that you can always get it back to its original state. Um, in this case, if we add a little heat, we can now get it back into a liquid state. And then um, same thing here is if you decrease the, the temperature, so you take away that energy, then you're going to um, drop it back down into a liquid state here. Um, so anytime that you are going through the phase changing pyramid, um, you're, you're only doing a physical change. You're only changing the physical appearance, appearance of that, um, that substance. Um, the big thing here that I want you to understand is that as you're going through here, that these are just phase changes. Like matter is going to be going through phases all the time. Um, and the way that you're going to get through it is that you have to either add energy into it or take the energy out of it. So to get it to go from a solid to a liquid, we add energy. From liquid to gas, we add energy. But then, and then to go from a gas to a liquid, we have to take that energy away. Liquid to a solid, we have to take that energy away. And then to go from a solid to a gas, we have to really heat that up. And so we're gonna add energy, and then to go gas to a solid, we're going to take that energy away. So if you remember from the last video when we talked about the states of matter, um, as you're getting here and you're moving from solid to liquid to gas, you're increasing the vibration and you're increasing the movement of those particles. You're increasing them because you're adding the energy. So they're moving, you're, they're moving faster and that's more energy. 
So you think about like as you go from solid liquid gas, they're moving faster, they're spreading apart further and further away, and then as you go, and so you're changing phases. And then if you go the reverse way, gas to liquid to solid, now you're going gas, they're moving really fast, they're coming back down together, they're getting closer and closer, moving slower and slower, and then they're like just slowly, slowly together, and then you got them really close together in that solid form. Okay, and then the keywords here, we've got evaporation. Whenever you're going from a liquid to a gas, the, the scientific term is evaporate, but when you're going the opposite way, you're condensing. So here you think about like evaporation, if you're boiling water, that water is then going to be going into. Condensation, if you think about when you have a, a, a nice cold iced tea, my favorite drink, or an iced Coke Zero, um, you have ice to get there and you get this cup and then on the cup on the outside is where you're starting to get the little water um, water um, droplets on the outside or we call it like the sweating and so that's really just condensation that's coming on there. Um, so you've got the water from the air molecules are then starting to drop in temperature and so those water from the air molecules are starting to condense onto the outside of the glass. Uh, um, the other terminology here is liquid. Uh, when you're going solid, if you have an ice cube and you add heat to it, it's going to melt into a liquid. But then the other opposite way, solidification, or other term is freezing. Uh, we've got another here, sublimation. Sublimation is really big here. Sublimation, oh, we think of like dry ice. When you have the big old chunk of dry ice, it's Halloween time. So we have dry ice here, and then that chunk immediately becomes that and starts that nice foggy um, uh, atmosphere and makes it all spooky. That's just dry ice sublimating um, into gas form so you're skipping that liquid step it goes straight from a solid to a gas because it changes um, temperature so quickly um, and then the energy changes enough to shift it from its solid form to its gas form we hit that um, gaseous point boiling point very quickly um, the other one is deposition going from gas into a solid here so we've got the reverse opposite of it the big thing here is the two points is that every single thing every single type of um, substance is going to have a boiling point, so the point at which it actually goes into a gas, it's also going to have a freezing point, the point at which it becomes a solid. Now you may have a very um, low boiling point, so like carbon dioxide um, is going at room temperature is going into that gas form, but um, it takes a hundred. You've got a hundred degrees Celsius in order for that liquid water to go into a gas form. So it's going to vary. So different things are going to have different boiling points and melting points, but they all have at least have one. All right, not for physical changes. Let's go to chemical changes. So chemical changes, this is very different. This is where you actually change the chemical. You actually change the substance and you create a new one. You commonly think of this as a chemical reaction. Anytime a chemical reaction happens, you're changing the substance. Uh, some examples are like, think of like a volcano um, model. So when we take, um, you, like in school we usually do them or you see them on the TVs um, <laughs> where um, you mix baking soda and vinegar and it starts just to fizz and that. So what you're doing is you're, you're creating a chemical reaction. Uh, cooking a raw egg is a chemical reaction. So you're adding heat to that proteins in the egg and so you're getting them to break down and to change into new substances. And the big thing here and you're thinking about is that you cannot get it back. And so easily. So you'd have to do another chemical reaction to get it back. Uh, some things you can't. Uh, so in this case, like cooking a raw egg. So you cook it. It's now you got the scrambled raw egg, raw egg. You can't easily get that back into what it was, what it used to be. Uh, so can you give it like that? Another thing I want you to think about is when you have signs of a chemical change. If you see things like a color change, um, if you're seeing where it's all of a sudden becoming a deeper color, um, production of gas or bubbles. So think about that vinegar and baking soda. You're seeing those bubbles come. You're fizzing. Alka-Seltzer, you're fizzing. Um, heat or light is given off, like when you're starting to get that heat. Um, 
uh, precipitate is formed. The, here's a picture of a precipitate coming out of solution here. And then when you get that change in odor, if you start to smell something, then those are all signs that a chemical change is happening because a chemical reaction is happening. Um, so that's easy peasy. That's enough of it. So now let's play the game like name that change. So um, here we go. Let's try to put some practice here. So if we tear a piece of paper, physical or chemical? That one, what do we think it is? It is physical. It is definitely going to be physical change here. All right, um, because you can, you're, you're not changing the substance. It's still paper. All right, let's go to this one. What type of change do we have here? So we've got this nice, beautiful forest, and now we have a fire. Um, going on and so now we're destroying that forest unfortunately um, so in this case we've got a chemical change right so what's our evidence we have we have light being admitted emitted we have there's probably a smell coming up we see smoke coming up um, so you see all those are definitely oh color changes here so definitely whenever you're burning something you are changing that back you can't just collect all of the ash and the, the oxygen the smoke and the light and then now you've got a you got a tree again so you can't get that so there you go uh, next what type of change is this we have this beautiful mountain here a mountain area and lake here and it looks like it's probably the the springish and then now oops look at this now it's like a frozen lake here. So this is, yes, a physical change. So all we're doing is we're just freezing the lake, freezing the lake. And then in the, the summer, it's coming here, we're going to melt it back in. So we've got like um, just a change within that physical change or uh, phase change pyramid. Another one here, we've got a glass, we're breaking it. How, did we ever actually change the composition of glass? No, we just have smaller shards of glass. And this is a physical change. Okay, next, cake. Um, we've got, started with all of these ingredients and now we got this beautiful, wonderful birthday cake here. Very elaborate. So um, yes, chemical change, because we actually get back the eggs, get back the flour, get back the milk, no. And what are some evidence that we have? Well, when it's baking, we're getting change in color. Uh, we're also getting a change in smell. So we're seeing that. It's definitely smelling very delicious. Um, okay, how about this? So here's rust. So we've got some metal. It's been exposed to the elements. It's been exposed to the oxygen and to water. And so we've got this rusting being created. So we've got a color change. Um, we probably have the smell of rust that's coming on. Um, so yes, this is a chemical change. We are making a new substance here. Rust is not the same substance as metal. So that was a chemical reaction. Here we go. Here's that condensation one. Yes, we talked about this. Physical change. Uh, here we go. We've got some kind of chemical reaction going on here with this cuto kiddo. Um, yeah, so we got smoke coming out, and that's definitely a chemical change. And then here we are roasting a nice marshmallow. It's wonderful fall time. Uh, let's see. What is this? Yes, it's a chemical change. Good. And now we're mixing Kool-Aid with water. So we're just putting the powder and the sugar in, dissolving it in water. This is hard. This is a physical change. The thing is, is that you can always get it back. And it may take a little bit harder to get back, but you can evaporate out the water and leave behind the Kool-Aid mixture and the sugar. And eventually, yes, you can get it back. Now, this is the big thing, is if you're dissolving something, just dissolving like glucose or sugar and water is not a chemical change. All you're doing is dissolving it. It's just mixing it together, creating a mixture, and you can get that mixture back separated out. So dissolving anything, creating that mixture, just going to be a physical change. Okay, last one. All right, here, Alka-Seltzer. Here we go. There's some fizzing. We're seeing it come here. We got, we're getting rid of that and we got the dissolving here. So here we got the physical change idea, but since we are getting this change here, you actually are getting a a chemical change, 
chemical change here because they're actually doing a chemical reaction. So you think the gas, you're dissolving it, but it's not really dissolving. Um, it's actually changing. Lighting a candle, well the wax is just melting, physical, and then the wick is burning, chemical. Alright, thanks for watching. Be good, be kind, be awesome, and always recycle.